Hi there and welcome to row 24 of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Now when I did this in 2021, I did the last week's worth of rows as a kind of a revisit to my favourite ones that we've done so far and that's what I'm doing today as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to revisit the workout from day 10, which was a stroke rate pyramid. And you start off at 18 strokes a minute, then you go up to 20, then 22, then back down to 20 and then 18 again. Now this is meant to be a bottom tier low intensity intensity workout. So how you start this really will affect how the row goes. So if you start at right about 2k plus 22, which is that kind of 5 out of 10, maybe 4 or 5 out of 10 effort, nice low intensity, then it should keep it nice and low. Because what's going to happen is you're going to go at least 3 seconds faster as you jump up to that 20 strokes a minute, and another 3 seconds faster as you jump up to the 22 strokes a minute. And that should really only take you to run about 2k plus 16 pace, or round about 7 out of 10 intensity and then you back off again. So it gets a little bit spicy, but it's not too tough. But if you start that 18 strokes a minute a little bit faster at that 2K plus 20, it can really make this a little bit of a tougher workout. So I want you to pay attention to your energy levels. This is the only reason I'm padding all this stuff at the front, is that if you're still quite worn out after yesterday's workout or whatever you've been doing before, just start on the easier pace guide, okay? Just take it easy on the 18s, increase your pace three seconds, three seconds, and keep this as a low intensity workout, okay? Right, fine. So let's get ourselves into a four minute warm up like we always do and we always start by setting up our machines okay so on the concept two go to your drag factor and set it to where you want it to be if you don't know where you want it to be set it between like four and five okay on the lever um, because too low isn't an issue too high is an issue because it starts to get a little bit tough and you have to heave against the stroke and that's my guide for the folks who don't use a concept two if you just have a resistance in front of you set that resistance so you get a nice feel from the stroke but you're not having to tug and pull and heave and err against it in order to get it moving all right <laughs> Next up, if you're able to, please set your monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down, both of which will mess with your posture. And finally, if you're able to adjust your foot plate or foot stretcher height, set them to a point where you can come into the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically, okay, straight up. If you're set too high on the foot plates, it's a bit tough to get there. If you're set too low, it's a bit too easy to get there. You can go a little bit past and what that does is it springs your backside out from underneath you and causes connection problems. Speaking of connection, that's how we're going to start today's warm. Up. So we're going to do this round about 20 strokes per minute and I just want you to think about enough of a push from your feet as though you're standing up from a squat, okay? Because you're going to work on the connection timing between your feet and your hands. But let's get rolling and I'll talk about it because this intro has been going on a wee bit too long. So here we go then, in three, two, one, let's go. So like I say, not too much power from your feet because then if you're pushed too hard it's harder to think about the connection timing. So keep the Stroke rate nice and low, 20 strokes a minute, and then come forwards, arm straight and a forwards tilt, and then try to think about pushing with your feet at the same time the handle connects to your machine. The point when you feel it biting into the flywheel or water wheel or magnet, whatever you have. So you push at the same time that your hands connect. If you push too soon, your backside escapes and you're left with this weird kind of lurch thing that you have to do. If you pull too soon, you just can't quite get that connection from your legs. Whereas if you get the timing right with that forwards tilt and arms straight, and hold those arms straight and forward tilt, as you push your legs in, the power surges into the machine. And talking of power, Let's increase it a little bit now. I want you to take it up to that 5 out of 10 intensity where your breathing rises, your heart rate rises. Similar to if you were climbing up a lots, lots of stairs, an everlasting flight of stairs. Okay, so you know that you're doing some exercise, but you're not like, <laughs> okay? You can have a conversation and things. For those of the 2K training pace, this means round about 2K plus 18. Okay? And then in three strokes time, we'll put one foot on the ground and continue rowing after this one. Okay, so unstrap one foot, put it on the ground, continue rowing. Try and find a stable place 
with that foot that's on the ground. Maybe rock forwards onto your toes and then back onto your heel. So the point here is that you're trying to keep your balance so that you can work on the flexibility as you come forwards, get that shin vertical. Let's swap feet. Ooh. Continue rowing. Because it does, just by rowing with one leg, it means you're not fighting the any kind of stiffness between both hips or hip flexors or quads or whatever may be tight. So this will help stretch things off, warm up those muscles, ready for today's row. Okay, one more stroke and put both feet back in. Tighten those straps, put your legs straight and roll with your back and arms. So swing over your hips first and pull in your arms and then push out your arms and tilt forwards over your hips again. It's simple, swing, pull, push, swing. Swing, pull, push, swing. But the important part is that swing first to pick up the initial connection of the machine. Okay, let's roll to the front, arms straight, forwards tilt, and just press out from the front, but not too hard, because I want you to work on holding this position, holding your arms straight and the forwards tilt as your legs drive. So don't worry about power, I just want you to get used to the feeling of holding this position. And then working on that timing between your feet pressing into the foot plates and your hands connecting at exactly the same time. Let's do one more. Oh, there we go. So, hopefully you're nicely warmed up. We are starting at 18 strokes a minute today, so that will help you throughout that first six minutes anyway to make sure you're nice and warm. Uh, but assuming that shouldn't be that tough a row today, okay? It should be a low intensity. Really try and keep on that low intensity. And I'm gonna do what I've been doing so far where I'm gonna replay the video from 2021. Uh, and I will join you at the end for a cool down and some stretching. So we're doing this half hour by doing two minute little splits. So we're gonna go 18, 20, 22, 20, 18 and then 18, 20, 22, 20, 18, and then 18, 22, 20, 18 again. So that's 15 of these two-minute splits. a 30-minute row. And then pace-wise, that 18 strokes a minute, you're going to start 2K plus 20, or if you want to go down to 2K plus 22, then please do. We're then going to go two seconds faster as we've got to 20 seconds, and then either two or three seconds faster as we go up to the 22s. And then we're, <coughs> excuse me, and then we're going to go back down that pyramid on the other side, um, and slowing down the two or three seconds and slowing down two back to that 18 strokes a minute pace again. Okay, should make sense. But I will keep you right as we start this row, okay? So let's just get into this before we cool down too much. So we're starting off 18 strokes a minute, run about 2K plus 20 to 22 pace in three, two, one, and we're off. Ugh. So it's always a chance it's just because I'm so cold in here today I'm chittering and that's why I'm messing up everything I'm saying but probably a bigger chance I'm just being a bit of a doofus today to be honest I've been sitting in my edit suite working on my TV program all day I don't think I've said a word to anybody until I came out here <laughs> so maybe it's just that I've got all this locked up all these words that want to tumble out my head but unfortunately you're getting them <laughs> so back to rowing sorry these two minute change up of the splits will absolutely fly by as you go up and down these rate and pace pyramids but the intensity, well, it might climb to like a six out of 10 by the time you get into the 22 strokes a minute. But really, this is a very simple bottom tier fitness building foundation row, which will just slow things down let you recover after day 23's powerful workout 
can give you some time to work on your technique too. Okay, so our change, first change up is happening in three strokes time. One more. Okay, 20 strokes a minute and two seconds faster. All you should need in order to increase your stroke rate and then your pace is just more of a push from your legs. If you can increase the power from your legs then you will generate a faster drive speed that will take care of part of how you increase your stroke rate and then that extra force will also make your speed go up so a bit of extra force and two extra strokes per minute should be all it takes to make you go two seconds faster for your rowing pace and the reason I say drive speed is just part of your stroke rate is that when you increase your rate you want your drive speed to increase a bit but your recovery increases slightly too so it's from both sides okay three strokes two strokes one stroke here we go then 22s already so just give it a little bit more of a push and you should just find especially the difference between 18 and 20 and 20 and 22 it doesn't take much to increase your stroke rate it's just a tiny bit more of a push and I'm really keen on the idea of trying to roll with similar drive to recovery ratios when you're doing these lower stroke rates so what that means is that your drive speed to recovery the ratio is the same the time will be different between 18 and 20 and 20 and 22 but you're still driving twice as fast as it takes to recover we'll wait until we get down to the 20s again and I'll show you it's easier on the 20s because it's one stroke every three seconds and that's coming up in just two more strokes time one more right here we go then so back down to 20 strokes a minute slow down those two or three seconds again as far as ratio it goes see if I get this right one two three one two three one two three one two three and that's not only a nice rhythmic 
fluid ratio to row at but the simple fact is that you're only putting effort in for a third of the stroke this way because you're just going one second drive two seconds recovery so those two seconds recovery you really want to make sure that you're not using a whole bunch of muscles to get back to the front of the machine let your body recover this drive phase should be when you are exploding power into the machine but this recovery phase lets you literally recover okay three two one back down to 18s and we've got two sets of these now so we're down on the bottom of our pyramid and then we stay down here for two sets before climbing up again and the same should be here for your ratio and rhythm where it's a nice powerful fast drive out and then your recovery takes twice as long and it helps to be in the right body positions for this if you're not getting that real hang off the handle where you feel the force flowing into the machine then you might find that your rhythm and ratio is somewhat destabilized you're like it only takes you like half a second to get through the drive because you're not getting that real kind of surge of power that happens when you push into the machine now remember we've still got two more minutes at this so it's almost like when you connect properly by pushing with your feet and you have a forward lean and straight arms it's almost like it's slowing you down as that power surges into the flywheel it's hard to hard to describe but you should feel that surge happen it's like a curve of power literally like the force curve on, on the monitor I wonder if that's why they call it a force curve rather than just a straight line where you don't feel like a big acceleration you should feel this kind of expanding surge of power as you push with straight arms and then at the back of the stroke when you finally swing over your back and pull in your arms that's when you feel that power taper off again okay six more strokes to go 
and then we increase up to 20s again. Two, one, and here we go then. 20 strokes a minute, a little bit more of a push. And we start our climb back up the pyramid again. Get your climbing ropes out. Oh, it's not a very steep pyramid, is it? We're just increasing two strokes, two seconds. And that's what keeps this down at that lower intensity. And listen, the only reason for putting in the rate and pace change is just to keep this a kind of quick moving row in terms of time breaking it down into two minute sections makes the time fly apart from getting you used to the subtle changes in stroke rate and how that affects pace there isn't really any huge training value between this or just doing 30 minutes at 20 strokes a minute but it's probably a bit more enjoyable okay four three two one up to 22s again so just get that feeling for how much you need to push and then try to get a sense of how your rhythm has changed tempo but you're still fluid between that ratio of drive and recovery the thing is that if you look at rowing like a 10k the way I pace it is to start off just under 10k pace and then after about 5k or so start to gradually increase it and you can increase pace by either adding more power from your legs at the same stroke rate or the same power at an increased stroke rate or obviously both and so if you can get used to how you can adjust your pace just by increasing power and rate it'll be a lot easier to control your pace in something like a 10k row right two more last one back down to 20 strokes a minute see these two minutes absolutely fly by don't they and we are well past halfway on this rope and it is just a great mental trick these smaller intervals or splits like if you were to do a marathon row rather than 
looking at it as 21,097 meters, you can just set your splits to 1,000. And you're only ever looking further ahead than the thousand meters you're currently rowing. Obviously, in the back of the mind, you know you've got a whole half marathon to go. Or if you did the same on a 10k, you still have to be mindful that if you're on the third 1k, you need to make sure you've still got enough to roll the next seven. But mentally, it can be easier to just get through 1k at a time. Okay, two strokes. One more. And we're back down to 18s again for the next four minutes. It should feel like as you hit this 18, like you're rowing really slowly. But use this slower stroke rate to really think about where your body positions are because you've got all the time in the world to get through this stroke. So a powerful drive is then followed by like 2.2 seconds of recovery. And that recovery is where you get your body into the right position for your stroke. So if you, if we take it from the finish of the handle, as you pull in the handle to your chest, as long as you have your elbows coming through your sides rather than way out to the side, then you create a natural springiness that wants to send your arms back out in front of you again. And you use that natural springiness to kick off your arm return so that it goes nice and straight. And then as your arms come forwards, it initiates that rise and tilt back over your hips of your, or from your back. So that by the time your arms are straight and your hands are past your knees, you're in the perfect position for the next stroke. You don't need to lean your back anymore once you get to this point. So hold it there. Arms back, hold. Arms back, hold. Now I don't mean hold the stroke and pause. I mean hold your position. Arms back, hold. And then all you have to do is bend your knees. And because you're constantly moving, not stopping please, <clears throat> that momentum is enough that your knee bend just takes you into the front of the machine 
in the perfect position for the next stroke. Okay, three, two, one. Back up to 20s and two seconds faster. <clears throat> because remember, that perfect position is arm straight, nice and loose, shoulders relaxed, handle at a neutral height in front of you, and you have hinged over your hips so that your back is in a powerful posture, tilted into one o'clock on the clock face. And you're up on your sit bones, ready to go. That posture thing's important. Up on your sit bones. If you think that your hips are rolled backwards and your tailbone is tucked underneath you, then you don't have the right posture. And then you just have to push the machine away with your feet. So just push your feet into the foot plates while holding that forward lean and keeping those arms straight. And that's how you get that hang how that surge, that curve of power goes into the machine. All right, four, three, two, one. Increase that push to get up to 22 strokes a minute and two or three seconds faster. There's no fast finish on this session. We're trying to keep it all at a nice low intensity to help build your fitness. Increase the amount of power that you have in your bowl of energy that you can use for any row. So push with your legs holding that forward lean and arm straight. Resist. Resist the urge to pull and grab against the handle. Then once your legs are about halfway through the stroke, that's when you finally swing your back from that forward lean to an 11 o'clock finish. And right after you start that swing is when you pull in your arms into sternum height, elbows through your sides. All right, two more, one more, back down to 20s and two or three seconds slower. Now, when you get to the back of the stroke, take a look at your feet to see if you are pulling them like a proper yank on the foot straps, either to stop you at the back of the stroke or to tug yourself 
forwards again. Neither of which do you want to do. So it can help to think about getting your legs all the way down at the back of the stroke. Not locked knees, but down. And it can also help to point your toes towards the front of the machine. And that will stop them wanting to come up and pull against the strap. And then, provided that you finish with a good posture, and like I say, the arms through your sides, then you're back to the beginning with arms away <clears throat> and your forward tilt. Okay, two strokes, one more. <clears throat> Last two minutes of this row, 18 strokes a minute. Now, why don't you tug yourself back to the front using the foot straps? Surely that's what they're there for. No, they're there mostly just to stop you falling off the back of the machine if you get the timing wrong or you're at a really high stroke rate. You should be able to just use your arms and body posture, momentum to help you get forwards. But posture is the key. If you need to finish your stroke in that powerful posture, even though you're leaning back, so still you don't want your tailbone tucked underneath you because if you tug on the foot straps what happens is this the tailbone <coughs> tucks under your knees come up and your posture is all backwards and rounded and then you have to use a whole load of muscles to pull yourself forwards and get yourself back into the right position for the next stroke. Remember right at the start where I said you shouldn't be using muscles that you don't need to in order to return to the front of the stroke. Last one. There we go. Kind of figure today, after such a rather random opening to today's row, I should probably be a little bit more professional and talk technique and stuff for the actual <laughs> main row itself. So it may be a low intensity workout, but it's still a lot of fun. That 22 in the middle really just takes it somewhere slightly different rather than it being a standard 20 or 18 for half an hour. So I hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Oh, I got crikey, I'm going blind. Ah. So let's get ourselves into a two minute cool down. Hopefully you've had a drink and you've uh, got yourself sorted. You've maybe wiggled your backside on the seat, but let's get into this. So do this. Around about the same pace and rate as the warm up, around about 20 strokes a minute, and that kind of 2K plus 18 ish, 5 out of 10 pace, and then just gradually slow down. So here we go in three, two, one, let's go. Oh, so yeah, that was a good finish to the day for me. It's actually my second workout of the day. My first was more high rocks training. Uh, and this one was, weirdly, 21 calorie ski, like ski erg. I never really work in calories, so it's quite strange to do calories. Uh, then, uh, thrust, 21 thrusters, 21 burpees over a weights bar, and then 21 butterfly sit-ups. And then 15 of each, and then nine of each. Rest two minutes, 
do it again, rest two minutes, do it again. And trust me, it's a tough workout. <laughs> but that was a good few hours ago, so energized enough to just sit on the back end of tonight's row as a nice low intensity kind of base builder. Because you can squeeze two sessions into a day as long as you're very aware of not only your energy system in terms of how you feel, like when you're feeling worn out, drained and things, but also when it comes to the making sure you're properly fueled, you're taking in enough food and kind of good food, not cake, <laughs> and also hydration. Make sure you're taking in enough fluids and, and then you can do two a day, but always, if you can do that, always pay attention to your energy levels, which hopefully have cooled down a little bit after that two minute cool down. And you can join me for some stretching if you like. If you don't have time, please just take a moment at one point to stretch your quads, your hamstrings, and hopefully your glutes as well. Not in the shower, because I don't want you to slip and fall over, but try and stretch them off just to make sure they don't get all gnarled up. Or if you have time, you can join Stretchy John. Hiya. And he'll take you through some guided stretching if you have a stretching mat available or something. Or I will take you through how to do it on a rowing machine if you don't have space. Keep those people behind you waiting while you stretch. So, put your feet back in the foot plates, keep your straps loose, flick your toes up against them so you can make a nice angle between your legs and your feet. Legs nice and straight, hands in the air, and fold forwards. Oh, I've done it again. If you sit too well, fold forwards. There we go, that's better. So if you sit too far forwards on the seat, not only does, can I, well, I say you, me. If I sit too far forwards on the seat, not only do I not quite get that stretch right into the hamstrings, strangely, but also the seat starts to kind of scoot away from underneath me. And I don't know whether that's why I'm missing the stretch, is I'm too busy trying to not fall off the seat. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, a lot of this has to do with how you fold forwards, what the angles are. Uh, like if you have your toes pointed forwards like that, then you ch tend to get it right here into your shit. Like, I mean, it's a good stretch to stretch your shin muscles down here. I mean, that's, ooh, that's lovely. Ooh, I'm feeling that nice. But that's not what we're doing. We're uh, doing hamstrings. So have your toes kind of coming back upwards and that kind of lengthens, kind of like lengthens your sciatic nerve as well. Whereas pointing forwards gets the front of your, well, your shins really. You don't really have a back of your shins because they would be your calves. Anyway, let's move on, let's move on, on to glutes. So one leg up on the rail, bring your other foot over so that the heel sits in the crook of your knee. The knee that's sticking up in the air, bring that across your body so you have a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with your other arm and then use the back of the rowing machine for a little bit of stability and then just rotate round into, down and into that hip while keeping this straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. And that the combination of the pressure of you bringing this knee across your body and that rotation should give you a really nice, you should feel that zing. Remember I've now started calling it stretchy zing. That zing coming up through, out through your glutes and kind of radiating through, okay? As, you're, as the muscle fibers kind of stretch and just kind of elongate into little bits and then they eventually just peter off as it kind of goes into your quad and whatever. So you should feel that stretch. Let's change legs, do exactly the same thing, rotate. If you don't feel the stretch, then do again, play with the angles. Make sure you've got this face, knee, foot straight line. Make sure you're doing a nice little rotation round. Make sure, just like think, well, if I put my foot too low here, do I lose the stretch? Yes. So if I come up a little bit higher and do it, oh, I get a better stretch, all that kind of stuff. You know your own body, you've got completely different angles and forces and levers than I do. So I'm showing you what I do and you can kind of tweak it around for yourself to make sure you get that stretch because it's really important you get that stretch. There's no point in wasting your time and going through the motions and saying, well, I didn't feel it, but because that guy on YouTube did it and it must work. Ooh. So let's move on to quads next. So lightly touch the monitor or you can grip onto the monitor if you want for stability. Flick one foot up behind you, hold your heel up against your backside and then a nice 
amount of kind of pull onto your upper foot so you're it's like you're bringing your leg backwards um, but trying to keep a good posture should then give you a nice stretch through your quad remember it's the quad you're going for here okay if you're getting it in your hip flexor you've got the angles wrong so you still want a nice posture a nice straight posture straight line between your shoulders your hips and your knee uh, stay close to your monitor because then if you start to fall over you can just kind of tap on it and you can steady yourself of course you would have thought the balance would have improved after doing this so many times but no <laughs> see look at me good grief Maybe I've got an inner ear problem. So I've just swapped legs in case, you're, in case you're wondering. Maybe I've got an inner ear problem. That's why my balance is so rubbish. Wouldn't that be weird? If. Did you hear that? <laughs> I'll put that at the edit suite. I'll turn it up. Good grief. Apparently it's dinner time for John. Judging by the. <laughs> that just came from my stomach. <laughs> I got a little monster in here. Maybe it was my waffle. Maybe it was my motivating waffle. It was all like, Rawr, you're talking rubbish. Get on with it. That could be today's hashtag. Get on with it. Right, hip flexors next. So one knee on the ground, toes up behind you. Other knee uh, is above your foot that's in front of you. Does that make sense? Yeah, hopefully. So you've got 90 degree angles on both. And then with a good posture, push that hip forwards. So you'll sink your body down slightly as you do that pushing the forwards because you'll be closing off that angle in your front knee and opening up the angle in your back leg. And physics means that something has to give. So you'll sink down slightly. So try to sink down with a good posture, okay? The whole point is, is that you come from this angle to this with a good posture because if you just do, if you're like that and you just lean forwards, I ain't stretching anything. In fact, that would be stretching my patience. <laughs> okay, and let's change legs. Oh, same thing. I do feel as I'm doing this, like progressively, that my hip flexors are getting looser, I'm getting more of a stretch out of them. But again, this is when we summon the mighty Jeff Cavalier. Um, because he uh, has a great series of videos on lots of muscles and stretching things but he particularly has a great one about whether you need to be stretching your hip flexors with like a little exercise that you can do lying on a plyo box or something which will let you know if you have tight hip flexors so don't always blame your hip flexors it could be your hamstrings could be your quads could be something else could be your calves you never know don't always just because it's fashionable to blame on your hip flexors uh what's next let's do forearms next so whoosh, so wax on, wax off. Hands in front of your face and then pushing them together, bring them down in front of your body, okay? And if you keep a nice, if your forearms are parallel to the ground and your fingers are um, at right angles to your forearms, yeah, that's right, um, then you will get, well, I hope, as long as you're pushing, you'll get a nice stretch underneath your forearms. That includes your wrists. So wrists and forearms get a really nice stretch from here. Now they're kind of, when you start to get that's my stomach going again. When you start to get any kind of forearm pain, um, or let's say, what, what, let's not use say pain, uh, tension, no, stress, sensation, whatever, um, from rowing at like a high pace, then this stretch is great for just easing it off, okay? So if you're like doing sprint, sprints with a rest period in between, you start to feel that kind of, that real solid weight <laughs> almost in your forearms in here then do this stretch and it'll ease it off in the rest periods. Let's do shoulders next, so hands straight in front of you, oh yeah, and then bring it across your body and then use your other arm, loop it across, loop it through, loop it whatever you want to describe this, just to give enough of a force to pull your arm across your body a little bit. Remember I was having a little rant yesterday about um, just using this to just add in a little bit of force for stress, but we're not like really yanking and forcing it, okay? It's enough for a stretch, but not so much that you're trying to like ping your shoulder out of its, you don't want to like pop it out of the socket, do you? That sounds awful. <laughs> don't really want that to happen. So that's the third time my stomach has rumbled. Hopefully I talk through that one. But I'm now thinking, what about, it's sausage pasta. I mean, if you've watched enough of these videos, you'll find out I have sausage pasta quite a lot. Let's change arms. Um, and it's not because it's like my favorite meal or whatever, but it's just it's so easy to make. You get some sausages, chop them up, chuck them into a frying pan or uh, even a saucepan um, and kind of to cook them that way, chuck in some passata, some mushrooms, some onions, some herbs, um, boil some pasta, mix it together, Parmesan cheese, black pepper, and a smile. A little bit of garlic bread maybe, depends. Um, but that's it, it's just so easy to put it together. 
although it was making sausage pasta. Uh, that, that was the meal that I was cooking when I had my accident with a knife, which cut my finger. I've already told you that story though, so I'm not gonna tell you again. If you haven't heard that story, you'll have to watch every single one of my videos to, to, to hear it. Let's do biceps next. So hands behind you as though you're flying. Hey, mummy, I'm flying. But rotate your thumbs outwards and then try and keep a good posture. And then a good stretch with those arms back. Nice rotation with your thumbs and you should feel that stretch. Again, if you're kind of, if you're just like la 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 with your arms, nothing. Okay, so you really have to, to think, oh, look, I'm flying. Hey, okay, you really have to keep that stretch the whole point about these stretches is to feel them okay to really kind of go right i'm supposed to be stretching my biceps here and like i can feel my shoulders and my biceps going here that's nice i can feel my triceps contracting as a result of my biceps stretching which is why we now do our triceps so let's do them so whoosh hand up in the air oh no wait it got lost oh, it touches your spine okay so elbows not quite up in the air so use your other arm to straighten it up and then just give it enough of a Enough of a straighten, enough of a kind of a push. I'm kind of really only pushing with one finger because I don't want to overdo it. But enough of a push just to get it up and you can, and I can feel the stretch in my tricep. Now my microphone is right up against my throat. So I do hope you, this doesn't just sound like <laughs> tricep. <laughs> I'll fix it when I change. Hang on. Sorry. Hello. Right, other one. Don't know if that's any better. Oh, I can really feel it on this one. When I change into this arm, I can really feel that tricep opening up. Uh, but again, it could well be. I didn't, it's, I mean, bad John. I didn't really do any stretching after I did the high rocks training earlier today. So I had to squeeze it in over lunch. So I get the feeling that um, all of those burpees over the bar um, uh, and all those basically press ups to come out of them are probably annoyed my triceps. They're going to write a letter to me tonight going, please don't do that again. If we didn't enjoy that, please make sure and stretch us afterwards. Yes. I've got a very polite handwritten letter. Yeah. Polite triceps. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's the standard. Sorry. <laughs> Done with the stretching. Um, what did I say? Oh yeah, get on with it. So if you want to use a hashtag to let me know you got this far through the video and just kind of go, ha, uh, then get on with it, I think is quite a fine uh, hashtag. Just all one word. Get on with it. Okay. Um, because, uh, yeah, sometimes I really just need to get on with it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Like I say, we're going to close off the 30 days of 30 minute rows by just revisiting a few of my favorite ones throughout the 30 days. Um, and hopefully you'll enjoy them as much as I did. Remember, enjoyment is that kind of as in I enjoy some of these because they're absolute killers. I enjoy some of them because they're like today's one that's just half an hour just goes and you're like, oh, is that we are we done? So, um, but yeah, there's different ways to enjoy something. Thank you so much for putting up with me and for coming back. Please make sure and say hello. Um, I'm going to say this just because I hardly ever say it, but if you want to subscribe and click like and stuff, please do. Um, because it does mean a lot when I see that number go up. I go, oh, people watch. And after all, the only reason that I make these videos and continue making these videos is because people say they're watching them. Okay, so uh, if you want to let me know you're watching, then click like and subscribe uh, if you wish. But to be honest, from a YouTube algorithm point of view, it means nothing. Okay, what means something is that you watch them. And then YouTube goes, ah, oh, people watch these. And it puts them in front of other people. So if you have like a hundred computers or whatever, if you, work in, say, if you work in a university or a school or something and you have like a thousand computers, just load up all of my videos on them and that'd be great. <laughs> the, saying that one thing will probably get me some kind of weird YouTube algorithm strike. So maybe not do that. Uh, right. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to go and have myself some sausage pasta so that my stomach can stop making these ridiculous noises. I will see you hopefully in uh, row 25. Yeah, uh, row 25 of the 30 days of 30 minute rows or one of my other videos, whether it's one of the workouts or the app reviews or technique hacks or whatever. Please get in touch and say hello. Let me know whether you're enjoying these and I will see you in some other video. Until then, take care. Be well. Bye-bye.